I think the response to um, atheism since 9-11 9-11 was really quite a watershed because before that time, people who were atheists, they didn't bother to say much about it and people who had a religious view, they didn't bother to say much about it either, for example the dinner party. But there was a polarization after 9-11 in which uh, people who were atheists or secularists said, oh no, no, here is religion causing big troubles again and we don't want that. And so they came out in the open and they took a stand. And the response from people who have religion and even sometimes people who think, well, you know, religion uh, has its uses, to certain individuals, for example to Richard Dawkins, because he's very outspoken, uh, he provoked a lot of hostility, he also provoked a big, a big following. And so the debate has been a very polarised one. But I think that um, even though there's nothing new about new atheism, it's, it's the same idea, nevertheless it has had a very good impact. It's made people think, it's made people sit up and notice. We wouldn't be doing what we're doing today uh, unless um, the, whole, uh, deba the whole discussion about secular attitudes, about humanism as a positive ethical outlook, and about the legitimacy of atheism uh, were now completely out in the, in the open. So in my view, it's a very good thing it's happened, despite the fact that it has provoked some hostility. Uh, I, I, don't, uh, um, I don't know Alain de Botton very well, I don't, don't even know his views very well, except that I, I hear, I haven't read his work, so um, I heard that he said something about uh, having a kind of church for atheists or something. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is a good idea. What do you think? What I think is this, that um, the religions have uh, hijacked, they have stolen the idea of those aspects of our lives which give us most refreshment and aesthetic and moral sense of value. For me, to go for a walk, to have dinner with friends, to listen to music, to lie in bed on Sunday morning and relax, these are spiritual exercises. These refresh the mind and the heart. The religions say, oh, you must come to the temple or the church or the synagogue, this is where this happens. And this is false. So we don't need churches for atheists, we have the world. We have science, we have nature, we have uh, friendship. These are the things that really matter. And if we would say to everybody, look, uh, life can be good. It can be good if we, if we celebrate the things that are positive about human beings. You don't need any gods and goddesses. You don't need a special place to do it. The world itself is enough. Well, f firstly, notice that atheism, secularism, and humanism are three separable things. They're naturally connected. The word atheism is a theist's word. The people who have a theistic outlook, they use the word atheism to describe people who don't agree with them. Uh, it's like somebody who collects stamps, who says, you are an a-stampist. It's, it's his word, it's not my word. If I don't collect stamps, I have no interest in stamps, so why suddenly should I have a fight with people who collect stamps? The fight was picked by the theists. So I like sometimes to say to people, a better word for me is a fairyist, because I don't believe in fairies, okay? So but if I have a discussion with somebody about fairies, and he, uh, you know, like, like the Pope, for example, and say, mm -hmm. the Pope, do you believe in fairies? He says, no. I say, why not? Give me your reasons. And then I say to him, take these reasons and put them in theology. They have the same reasons. Oh, I'm a feminist myself. I'm a, a great uh, champion of the rights of women. <laughs> I think it is a tragedy in our world that half of all humanity for most of history has not had an opportunity to make its contribution its creativity its uh, you know artistic productions its involvement in uh, understanding our world it's a terrible tragedy for, for for the human species yes i think there is such a thing as scientism that is the over application of science I think any self-respecting scientist will say, uh, I research some aspect of uh, botany or of, of particle physics or of cosmology, and that to think that, that, science has, that science has all the answers to everything is uh, uh, I mean, completely overreaching itself. Scientific method, that is rational, experimental, empirical, 
um, accumulation of data and uh, examination of it and putting things to the test. Scientific method has uses outside science. It has uses in social science, it has uses in history, for example. It has uses in our thinking about which train to catch from Oxford to London. So, um, so if, if, if scientism is the idea that science can solve all human problems, then scientism is bad. The use of rational methods of inquiry which we've learned to apply so successfully in science, that, that's very useful. But there are whole aspects of uh, human life and experience which need music and poetry and love and dance. And These are not things... Science can tell us some things about why it's so, you feel so good after you've been dancing in a club all night mm-hmm. you know, because of the endorphins. But uh, that, you, know, you don't need to know about the endorphins to have a good time. The future of the humanities. Well... Uh, the, by the humanities, we mean the study of literature, of philosophy, of history, mm-hmm. of languages, of classics, and so on. In, in my view, and uh, you may, maybe you know I founded a college of the humanities, yeah. I think that, that the, the humanities together are the conversation of humankind about our values, about the things that we care about, about the aspects of human experience which are deepest and richest. And... Most places in the world today are pouring money and educational effort into science, technology, engineering, mathematics, we call STEM, the STEM subjects. And of course this is important, and of course we must do it. But if we did that and we ignored what history can teach us, what we can learn about human nature, human experience from literature, what, what philosophical reflection can give us about how we, how we live and how we use what we know, if we ignore the humanities, we become less reflective, less intelligent, less understanding. Because science, technology, engineering, mathematics, these are about knowledge, about data. But there is something which is one more step than knowledge, and that is understanding. Yeah. And the humanities help us to achieve understanding. It's going to be both, I think, yeah, because the MOOC phenomenon is uh, remarkable. Um, you know, in some developing economies, uh, the mobile telephony has meant you don't have to put poles in the ground and wires. So they've been able to jump a whole uh, technological generation. Mm-hmm. And the MOOC phenomenon means you don't have to build universities and libraries because there it is on the Internet. So this is a wonderful development. Um, the, the opportunity for very, very... Uh, well-qualified professors to be able to speak to hundreds of thousands of people anywhere in the world. So it's, it's wonderful. But the very best of those students mm-hmm. are not going to be satisfied just with their laptop screen. After they've learned some stuff, they're going to want to explore it more, ask some questions, be with some other students. Already we have empirical data, okay? People are studying MOOC courses. They set a Facebook discussion group. Then they find out who in the Facebook lives nearby. Then they meet these people in a coffee sh- in a coffee shop, because human beings want to talk like this face to face. Yeah. So, so what will happen is the MOOC phenomenon will will spread higher education. Mm-hmm. The, at the top, the very best students, and you, even if it's one percent, it will be hundreds of thousands of people, mm-hmm. are going to want to go to elite institutions to meet really in- clever, intelligent people like themselves, very interested, so they can sit and talk, because. You can send an email, you can have a conference call, but the, the serendipity, the chance, the accident, the, the um, unexpected, which happens in human contact, is still essential to complete the educational experience. Uh, it's very hard work to found a new college, <laughs> and, um, but it has been very exciting, very exhilarating. I hugely enjoyed it. Um, because the, the college is uh, quite um, uh, sort of high, high quality, the students are very bright, they're very enthusiastic. And to be a university teacher who is teaching very clever people, you learn a lot. There is a Latin saying, docendo disco, I learn by teaching. By teaching. So to, to be a, a master of a college is to be a, a pupil all your life.